Hello everyone. Welcome to this presentation about communicating with Internet of Things. My name is Peter Martin and I'm from Nijmegen, that's in the Netherlands. Um, this is, yeah, that's here. <laughs> and um, I'm a Joomla developer. I do Joomla support for my customers and I create custom applications for my customers. Um, an extension that I recently released for free is a DB8 site dev. You can ins install it, uh, import a JSON file with uh, everything you have to check on your site before to put it live. And you can uh, change it and save it for your next website. So you can create your own workflow with it. In the Joomla community, I'm uh, volunteering at the global, I mean at the forum, <coughs> as one of the global moderators. And I also do some other stuff, like in the Netherlands, helping out with the pizza box and fun. And in this presentation, I will tell you something about Internet of Things, about two small projects I did myself, about MQTT, and I will end with a demo. And I hope to help to have half the time for the demo. So, first of all, if I talk about Internet of Things, I have to talk about the Internet of People first. Um, when we are using the internet, like you are using a browser to find your website, or you are sending an email, you are using the internet, which is a sort of, it's a protocol, it's a sort of road, a sort of layer, where all the, um, your packages with information, uh, they use the, the road, the, the layer. If I talk about the internet of things, it's not people who use the internet as a transport medium, but it's devices that are connected to each other. I read on Twitter a really great quote, after I posted it myself, which says, the Internet of Things is a network of devices that are connected to each other uh, using TCPIP, which is Internet, and communicate autonomously. When we talk about, uh, think about autonomously, don't forget what's happened in uh, the Terminator. Uh, you have to be careful with this kind of stuff. If you look at... Uh, Killer applications, which might really help uh, to promote Internet of Things. I don't think this that will be the killer application. It's really expensive. It's a sort of uh, uh, refrigerator with built-in uh, device that checks everything that's in the refrigerator. And if you're out, it will order stuff for you automatically. Actually, uh, I think the British people have a better solution. It's a fridge cam. It's even cheaper. If you are in a store, you can use this device to look in your refrigerator and if you're out of milk or something like that. Actually, I don't like this kind of stuff, so not for me. What I think uh, that's good for the Internet of Things is this device. It's the Arduino. Who knows Arduino? All right. So this is a, a microcontroller, meaning it's a sort of board with a, a chip on it and you can flash the chip with information, with your own program. And if you disconnect it from your USB, you can just put a 9 volt uh, power on it and it will start running your program over and over again. So people use it in uh, domotica, so in their house, and for other places. This is just a thing. This is not an Internet of Things, it's just a thing. But uh, at the end of 2014, there was a Chinese firm called Expressive, they released this kind of chip. It's the ESP8266. And I have it with me. Is this really small? And now it's really cheap. It used to be $5. Now it's only $66 on eBay. It's a Wi Fi router. commands like uh, in the past we had modems telephone modems to connect to the internet and it uses AT well I don't really am familiar in AT so it was a bit of a problem the other problem uh, this device had the documentation was in Chinese only <laughs> um, some people translated it into English and then they found out something really cool uh, this small chip if you see it like here there are two ports on it, which has GPIO 2 and GPIO 0. GPIO means General Purpose Input-Output. 
Meaning you can put stuff on it that uh, arranges some input or some output. <coughs> so you can put sensors on it or uh, put something on it like LEDs or something for the output. Um, something else they found out. The chip on it, you could flash it yourself. So you don't need to connect an Arduino to this. You could directly flash the chip if your program is not that big. There are a couple of tools for that. And quite recently, there was a new tool called Arduino uh, IDE. I mean, you use it for your Arduino. So people who use Arduino know this device, this IDE. But there is a library now available, so you can uh, use uh, Arduino IDE uh, to flash this one. So the first project I did looks like this. Um, when you start to work with electronics, you don't want to solder immediately. So you start working with such a thing like this. It's called a bread bin, breadboard. I mean breadboard. Too close to each other, so you can't put it over the gutter. So and this is a normal chip. One side you can connect devices, and the other side too. But this didn't fit. So the first thing I had to do. I created my own bridge, I sold something, so I could push this chip, you need some sort of programming uh, interface. It's a serial interface called USB to TTL, serial interface, and you have to connect a lot of uh, different uh, uh, pins. And when it's connected, you can run uh, on the command line a script called ESP tools. Uh, this was one before I uh, discovered the IDE for Arduino. And then I flashed this chip with some uh, program I wrote. It was uh, MCU <coughs> as a sort of operating system and Lua script that is used in the game industry to do stuff I wanted. And what's the thing you would do with I IoT devices when you have something like this? Well, I did. I, trend, I created a temperature device. So I put an eight, I mean, a four and a half volt battery uh, pack to it, and I connected it to thinkspeak.com. So every five minutes, um, it would uh, uh, look for the temperature. It would uh, sense the temperature, and it would put it to my own channel. It's on thinkspeak. It's uh, free, and it uses REST API, which is nice. So this was my first project. The second thing I did was something to completely different. I used to work at a co-working place in my hometown Nijmegen. And um, on a Wednesday, I was working over there. I was the only person over there at th that time. And I have to tell you, uh, when we are with a couple of people, we will have lunch together uh, during lunch hours. So then one of my colleagues, Remco, he arrived. And Remco said something like, oh, uh, you're here. I didn't know you were here. If, you, if I had noon, then I would phone to you and we could have had lunch together, but I already bought my lunch. So I didn't have lunch. So I could, of course, go outside. Uh, there's a really nice uh, place near uh, the co-working place to buy lunch. But well, Remco is in IT, I'm in IT. So we're thinking about what can you do to prevent this problem in the future? Well, problem. Um, he was thinking about the website. Uh, if you log in, I mean, if you arrive, you log in, and if you uh, leave, you log out. But there are problems with it. I don't like the extra handling. And because people have to do extra actions, um, it's not reliable. So what's the first thing what you do when you arrive at work? Nothing? Well, the kettle. So the kettle, the kettle yes. Start my PC. Yes, that's a good point. Well, first I think you take your jacket off, yes. <laughs> uh, switch on the light probably, and then the kettle or a cup of coffee, and then indeed you turn on your PC, or maybe you have a wi uh, uh, mobile phone with you and you connect it to the Wi-Fi. So people who know me know that I like Raspberry Pi and I use it for everything. Yesterday I uh, won a book in the raffle about 1805, and wants to switch, so I have a really technical uh, German book about Raspberry Pi, which is great. 
In this case, I have my Raspberry Pi connected to the a local area network at my co-working place. And what I did was I wrote a small bash script. And this bash script collects the MAC addresses of your computer or all the devices that are uh, connected to the Wi-Fi network. The bash script sends this uh, MAC addresses every five minutes in an array to my web service. And if I talk about web services, uh, WordPress has a really nice feature called REST API. It's in the course, it's October 2015. But first of all, I was doing this in August 2015. And secondly, I used Joomla. And yeah, we don't have a REST API yet. So a couple of years ago, I was at the AM Beyond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guys from Watchfully. He showed a method to use a, a framework called Slim Framework and to use it as a REST API connected to your Joomla website. So this is what it does. It connects to the Joomla website, gets all the MAC addresses stored in the database. And I have a Joomla application where I can manage the people, the MAC addresses, and it shows who's there. Another colleague of mine, he created a mobile app for it. It does the same. So we can just on your mobile phone check who's there. It works. However, it's all one-to-one -one communication. And also RESTful. And RESTful is a bit heavy. So I was looking for some and if you look for pro protocols, for message protocols, uh, you have a lot of choices. And I chose uh, MQTT because it looks the most promising to me. So I'll tell you something about MQTT before I do the demo with MQTT and my Raspberry Pi, of course. So MQTT is a message protocol where you have a message broker, which is a server. And all devices that are connected have to subscribe to certain channels. and Devices that publish in a certain channel um, are publishers, and everyone who is in the channel will receive the information. It's a bit technical, but who, who has WhatsApp here? Yes, okay. With, with WhatsApp, you have WhatsApp groups. Well, this is actually sort of WhatsApp for machines. So you have a broker, which is the server, topic, which is a sort of group. Uh, people who are subscribed to topic are subscribers. And if you post in a, in a group, it's the same as posting in a topic. Topics look like this, but you can do anything. In this demo, I will use test. It's not really convenient, but it's easy for, for me. You can do <coughs> stuff like wildcards, single level, multi-level. And so you can do a lot with communication. The first thing what happens if you connect a device to your MQTT broker, it has to connect. Uh, you have to subscribe to certain topics and when you are subscribed you can publish to certain topics. The broker will reply that you are connected with uh, Connect and when you subscribe they will respond with OK, we acknowledge your subscription and when you publish something they will say OK, we have received it uh, so we, uh, we, we acknowledge your publish but only if the quality of service is one or two, meaning Sometimes you don't need feedback. If I have a temperature device, which is just in a room, it can send the information every five minutes. It doesn't matter if, it, if I miss one or two. But sometimes you need a knowledge of receipt. And then uh, yeah, you have to say quality of service is one. And sometimes it's just once. Like if you want to switch on something, you should not receive it two times. Otherwise it's on and off again. So um, security is always... Uh, very, very uh, important. In this case, there are three kinds of security. You have authentication. So you have to protect your message broker uh, for people to log in. So you work with passwords or maybe with uh, certificates like public private key. You can authorize people to do stuff and also allow some operations. And finally, the communication itself. You can secure it using uh, uh, If you just start, I recommend uh, to use uh, uh, software as a service, 
like ThingSpeak or Adafruit.com. They are free and they, you can use them to test stuff. I like to do it myself, so I have Raspberry Pi where I installed a Mosquito. And to communicate with it, I installed on my computer a client called MQTT FX. And with my computer, with my client, I can communicate with it. Of course, with a mobile phone, you can install stuff on that as well. Oh, by the way, all the blue links are clickable. So if you uh, see the presentation online, you can find everything back. And finally, I have my uh, small chip or an Arduino. And I can put stuff on it as well. Um, finally, we have some script. Uh, for the Raspberry Pi, like Python, or even PHP. And I think it's demo time right now. So the first thing, what I do, I will switch my screens. So I have the same screen here as over there. And then I will show you some stuff. Uh, first of all, this is my Raspberry Pi with Lego. I hope I don't get problems with my son at home because I didn't ask. Well, he's, he is not really in the, in the age of uh, using, looking at YouTube videos, so <laughs> he, won't, he won't know. So, okay. So the first thing is, uh, you have to synchronize the screens. this will do. So on my uh, local computer I have a program called MQTT FX and when I publish something uh, to the channel test I have the channel test over here I say publish so it receives the communication. So from my PC, it my mobile phone, I have to connect to the same uh, network. And this is something uh, I have to explain. If you use those chips, the ESP8266, you have to code your SSID of the network you want to connect to, the username and the password. So if I uh, program it at home and I have it here, I would have a problem because I don't know the, the password here. So I took my... my uh, and the first thing I go, I just connect to my Raspberry Pi. And when I'm connected, I start my MQTT client. And I can go to a topic which says test. And I would say mobile. So this is what I sent from a mobile phone, again to the Raspberry Pi, to the MQTT broker. So this is uh, me using MQTT for messages. Now this is not Internet of Things, it's just me playing with my computer and my mobile phone. So let's do something else. At home, I soldered this board. I soldered this board. Um, which consists of a temperature device and a humidity device. Uh, there is a small board on it which will um, uh, change the 4.5 volt to 3.3 volt because the chip only has can use with 3.3 volt. So I just connected it and. If everything goes okay, the blue line will start to blink. 
ah, it's okay because I programmed it. If it connects, it will send a message to uh, the test channel. And what I can do now, and it says 26 degrees here. And I can do the same for the humidity. And I do something like this. I have to spit in it. Drop it in your coffee. Yeah. Oh, you have to. Oh, yeah, 94. So, this, this is, yeah, this is just a, a small application. If you want to, uh, to put a program on this chip, you have to flash the chip. So, what I did, I took a small breadboard with me, with um, the serial uh, to USB to TTL um, converter. I connected it to my laptop. Uh, where could I put it for the, for the camera? Like here? Okay. So um, there's already something on it, but I will flash it anyway. So I have this program. Uh, you can see it now. So I have to start it again. Can I move it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, by the way, uh, all the code for my presentation will be available, or is already available on GitHub, so you can uh, use it yourself if you want to. So here I have a program in Arduino which says pub sub client, which is a library for MQTT. It also says include ESP8266 Wi-Fi. Because this is just text and it will compile it to a machine code. And when compiling sketch says ready, then it's ready and I will uh, flash it to the machine. But I have to press a button as well. Yes, so now it's done. And this is always tricky because you have to. Yes, it's working. So now I'm flashing the chip with the code here. And when it's ready, uh, you see it stops and it says 100% completed and it probably blinks one time and then it's ready. And then we can play. Yes, where can I put it? Like here? You don't see it here. Something like this. Yeah? Okay. So the first thing link, etc. So it listens to uh, the commands like um, green. green blink and the green light blinks and the same with red blink and then the red light blinks this is fun uh, so far uh, this is IOT uh, we are at the Joomla conference so let's do something with Joomla so I will start with 364 and it's a really awesome layout and what I did I created two plugins. The first plugin is a user plugin. Um, because can you see it? No. Can you move a bit that you don't have mm. 
Yes. So um, we all know uh, we have a lot of hackers and we need, uh, we need backups and we need stuff to uh, protect our website for hackers. So let's assume I'm a hacker. So I see this website and this is not really hacking, this is just playing around of course. But let's assume I'm a hacker, I try to log in as a hacker and the password is something wrong. Uh, the name of uh, the plugin is it's in the Joomla website and I will say red blink if it's triggered and I trigger this this plugin in the front end uh, you will see there a warning and here you see the right right red light blink but we don't create websites to, to look at hackers, we want to see how, how well our content is doing. So in this case, I also created another plugin, which is called uh, DB8 uh, Article Red. It does a bit the same, but in this case, if I go to uh, Contact Us, nothing happens. But if I go to the uh, page about, it's an article, so it's content. But maybe you have a website with a shop and you want to see how well the shop is doing. Well, it's, it's really, really, really great. Anything about the, the, the orders they, they have with your site. So what you could do is something like this. I am connected to my Raspberry Pi at the moment. I'm logged in. And I start a small script called uh, so now it's connected and what it does if I go to the back to the website again I don't have a web shop installed here so if I go like refresh on the contact us it happens but if I go to Joomla day uh, it should say something like <coughs> doesn't work yes so uh, you see something like this uh, so it says like uh, article uh, etc so I can try it with my, my okay so um, what I did for this conference I uh, am experimenting at the moment with uh, RFC tax NFC, that was the name? RFC. NFC. NFC, yes. So with such a chip you can put information on this. In this case. I'm a visitor. Yeah. It's because uh, this one redirected me to the website and it should say something like another IP address than we just saw. But, so far, we have been communicating from the website to the devices, to IoT devices. But maybe you want to do it the other way around as well. Like, something happens here, like the, we can maybe have the temperature, and you want to show the temperature on the website, live. Um, it's not really possible, except if you use WebSockets. So, let's show you with WebSockets. But I had a problem with my Raspberry Pi, so what I did, I have another device as well, oh, I can put it on here. this is Onion Omega, uh, I got it from a Kickstarter a project, a crowdfunding project, and it's just a, a router chip, when you switch it on, you can log in, and you can connect it to a local area network, like another router. So I can use this for my IoT devices. So I can bring it with me, connect this to the, to the Wi-Fi, and then all the devices I have with me, they, they just know this address. So when it's ready, it st stops blinking, 
What about how many times do we have? Uh, it's almost done. So, ten, ten, ten minutes. minutes. Oh, okay. So I have to connect to to my Wi-Fi again. Restart it. So it's you, you, you uh, It's the client that I connect to my uh, to this device at the moment. I can look at the broker status, so I can see there is one device, one client connected, and I just do it again. I subscribe and I do the thing to publish. Yes, it works. So, okay. So, um, on this instance of Mosquito, I installed uh, WebSockets. Um, the other Raspberry Pi, I mean, the, the Raspberry Pi also has. has, has I have to uh, connect first. This is because my Raspberry Pi is using the same stuff. So now it's okay. Oh no, it's not fine. Okay, so now I'm uh, connected to my Onion router. And in this case, I do Mosky. Mosquito is already live. Yes. Okay, so I will do mosquito. No. Oh. I have to uh, pull uh, the web sockets. So now it's connected to the WebSockets, and now I can go to Joomla back. In Joomla, I have a, a small module, oh, and the module is called MQTT Messages. It's connected, again, to the, to the same IP as the message broker, but in this case, it listens to another port. Instead of the 1883, it listens to 9001, also to the same public test. And if I publish it, and I go to the front end, I should have a module position somewhere that I... You did the same inside. Temperature, temperature device or maybe I just sent a message to the MQTT. Oh, I have to connect to the rest of the, to the, to the machine again. connected and let me go back to uh, sending some topic to uh, test
So I will say uh, WebSockets at Juvenile Austria, and I publish it to uh, my test channel, and it should appear yeah, it appears here on the, on the screen. So in this case, uh, you can use MQTT and WebSockets uh, to get information and publish it on your website as well. So this is it. Are there any questions? <laughs> Is there, a, is there a latency issue? That was very, that was very quick, but if you were a local network. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, in the same room. Yeah. Um, if it's on the network, like if I use a ThinkSpeak or something like that, I don't think there is much, there is no, not no. much latency, but I have not tested that. Mm. All the questions. Who's gonna do this at home? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a question. When you reload the page, do the messages uh, stay up? Or no. No, okay. No. So it's just uh, when the message comes in to the website, it is. You can see, it says also article. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Because the um, uh, pin that listens to uh, if articles are retrieved is also still uh, okay. uh, online. Mm -hmm. But if I go to contact us, you don't see the refresh like that. So, um, no, it doesn't stay online. But maybe if you put it in a session or on another variable that you uh, retrieve again, it will, but it's a bit not your. Okay, okay.